All right, we now have 100 AVI files that we've selected from our shoot in the Dominican Republic, and we're now ready to bring them into a new project where we will now do our color correction and any sharpening that we need to do. And uh, so what we're going to do for that is create a new project. And the idea behind uh, the type of project that we want to uh, start here, the kind of settings that we want to make, is uh, to pick settings that you or your broadcast station or your media center is uh, using the most of. For example, if you're a broadcast center in North America, you are probably working in NTSC and uh, in an interlaced format. And uh, most of my stuff uh, also goes for broadcast or is purchased by broadcast centers. And so that's the setting that I use. But of course, if you're uh, primarily uh, working in progressive or PAL country or uh, you know 24 frames frame rate, uh, you'll want to pick that type of setting if that's the type of media library that you're building. And that way, not only will you have this generic set of AVI files, but you'll also have a set of files ready to go in your timeline the way that you like to edit or the way your station likes to edit or the way that your clients want to have them. Okay, so what we're going to do is create a new project and we're going to pick settings uh, for our purposes that are interlaced in the 1920 by 1080 at 59.94i for interlaced. And we'll give it a name and hit OK. Now what we'll do is we'll import those 100 files. And uh, just before we drag those down the timeline, um, we'll take a look at our settings here. I usually like to have all the audio on one track so it's easier to adjust audio at this point. And just so we can see what we're doing a little better, we might stretch out the video a little bit. And we've got the orange selected there. That's the way I like it. And so now with all of your 100 clips selected, just drag and drop the whole line right down. Uh, the the whole set of videos right down to the timeline. And so this is the point where we want to do uh, our color correction or sharpening, any filter effects that you think uh, that you might want to do for your uh, stock media library. Now if your primary goal is to send these to a stock media site for sales, it's good to know that people who purchase media prefer you to leave it uh, rather neutral when you do your um, color correction. Uh, in other words, don't add a lot of saturation, don't add too much sharpness, don't color grade, just kind of leave it uh, as generic and neutral as possible because they know that if you add a lot of saturation, that's going to be one generation and then when they get it, they're going to have to uh, color grade it to their own specifications. And if you've added a lot of saturation just to make the, the clip look sweet and, and, and hopefully easier to sell, well, uh, they know that they're going to have to take that out. And it's, if they see a really highly saturated video, they might not even buy it because they know that you have baked that color saturation in. So when you're doing your, if you're, if you're going out to stock media, as you're doing this process, uh, do your best to go easy on the color correction. But I think we might want to help these out just a little bit. Um, let's go to our effect palette and let's drop on a color balance. Well, let's make sure that we've only got the one selected. We do this. Drop on a color balance and uh, perhaps a YUV curve. And let's just uh, just give this a little help. Go down to your information palette, and just add a little bit to the curve there. And maybe just add one point of chroma. And maybe drop down one brightness. And that looks pretty good. Now, as you go through this, there are little tricks and tips that you can use to kind of speed up the process a little bit. Uh, if you know that a lot of your clips uh, are basically the same way, 
Um, rather than actually drag on your YUV curve or, and your color balance to every clip and make those fine adjustments, um, what you can do, well, first of all, here's one little trick. You can, because the first one is still highlighted and selected, you can just uh, select both of the filters that you dropped on that clip that are still showing up in the information palette because it's highlighted and uh, then just drag and drop those to the next one. And if it's just a little bit too much, well then you just have to open up one of them and uh, back off a little bit. Now this is actually a uh, shot with a different camera, shot to progressive uh, from a DSLR camera. So first of all the audio is hot, so let's drop that down. It's not only hot, it's really bad, coming straight from the camera. If you've shot with DSLR cameras, you know what I'm talking about. All right, um, but it's probably going to require just a little bit uh, different correction. Uh, usually when you're shooting in a DSLR camera, if you're following the rules, you're supposed to shoot in kind of a neutral setting and then add your sharpness later. And uh, so in addition to our YUV curve, we might uh, go down and find the sharpness tool and play with that a little bit. Okay, and sharpness. I just want to add 10 or 15. Okay, so you get the idea. Now, here's the other trick. If we have a whole lot of clips that are going to require the same um, setting, you can make a user preset. So let's just go back and, for example, select these two that we think might work for a lot of the clips on our timeline. Uh, select both of them and then with a right click you can save as a current user preset. So we'll just give this a name as, um, uh, let's see, this was a Canon XF300 pop. So now, rather than grab those two clips and work with them, we can just uh, uh, use our user preset that we just created and drop that onto our timeline. And as we look at it, if it needs a little bit of fine-tuning, of course, we can always go in. And now that uh, we have that user preset that, that we think might work uh, for a lot of them, what we can do is grab more than one clip at once. So let's see, for example, There's some uh, DSLR footage in here, so I, I want to keep those separate. But ju uh, just for uh, example, um, we've highlighted a bunch of clips. Now, rather than add uh, our filters to this one by one, we can just drag and drop it once on any one clip, and all of those filters will now uh, drop onto each one of the clips that was, that was uh, highlighted there. And then we can go through each one and s determine whether or not it needs to be fine-tuned uh, further than what we've already set in the clips. Okay, this was the one that, uh, one of those ones with the DSLR footage. So let's take those off and add our, we've got a, a preset already defined for this type of camera. And uh, that made it a little bright, so we're going to go into now let's go into the color balance and drop back, drop back on the brightness a little bit. And it seems a little saturated. Let's back off on the saturation a little bit. Well, you get the idea. Uh, our goal here is to actually just go through each of these clips and add uh, whatever uh, color correction or other filter effect needed uh, so that they'll be ready to go, ready to market as stock clips. If your audio is hot, Remember to pull that down. Now, some of you might be wondering, uh, hold on, um, here you have some AVI files that uh, were uh, shot with a camera that was set for interlaced, and then some of them are progressive. And uh, if you've kind of been following along with the logic of my workflow, you'll know that the way we did it is we brought all of the interlaced clips into one project and 
picked our in and out points and saved those to AVI files and then we opened up a new project with progressive settings and brought in all of our DSLR footage and saved those after we picked our in and out, saved those to AVI files. So we do end up with uh, AVI files, some being interlaced and some being progressive, and now we're all working with them on one timeline. And you might be wondering, uh, well, hold on, don't you need to reinterpret those? You know, if you're coming from a, an Adobe background or some other nonlinear editing system, you, you might be thinking, well, you need to do something with those before you export. Uh, because they're now on an interlaced timeline. Well, not really. Uh, EDIUS kind of takes care of all of that automatically in the background. When you bring in uh, progressive clips and place them on a timeline in a project that is an interlaced project, just by placing them on the interlaced timeline, EDIUS does that reinterpretation automatically in the background for you. You don't have to reinterpret the footage. You could if you wanted to. You could go to any one of these clips, you know, if you just uh, wanted to be safe in your mind that it is interpreting it properly. You could right click on any one of these clips, go to properties, and change the field order from progressive to upper field. Hit apply, and then you would have peace of mind knowing for sure that this clip, this progressive clip, is going to be interpreted properly on an interlaced. Okay, well that uh, gives you an idea of what I do in this uh, second step of our process. It's basically going through and uh, making sure all the clips have an optimal look. If there's any uh, clips that have a problem with white balance, we want to take care of that. And just uh, go, th go through and make sure you've got good exposure and uh, make everything ready for export. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this timeline. Uh, doing all of the color correction to all of the clips and in our next tutorial I'll show you how I set these up to be exported in a batch export process Which I think you'll find interesting and uh, very valuable uh, as you develop your own workflow uh, to handle this exporting process